الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومي ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظما بعدها ابدا اللهم امين الله سبحانه وتعالى تلز اس ان سوره التوبه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين او يو بيليف فير الله اند بي امونج ذا تروثفول وانز تروث از ذا اوبوزيت اوف لاي Truth is also the opposite of falsehood. But truth in this context means much more than being truthful in what you say, truthful in your witness. Here it means to be true to your own faith, true to your own commitment. Whatever you make of commitment between you and Allah, between you and people are of the highest order. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, the first ayah, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, awfu bil-uqood. O you who believe, make good on your promises. Fulfill your promises. Keep your commitment. Keep your word. This is a lesson, not only for politicians, but it is for everyday person. We all make commitments either to ourselves or to others or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of those highest commitments is the commitment of being in submission to Allah. This is something very central and very important. So truthfulness is to be true to your commitment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the men who stood up with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا Among the believers are men who were true to their commitment. So being true to one's commitment is the highest description of manliness. Being a man, and this is not about male or female. This is man meaning a human. To be a man, to be رجل, you must keep your word and let it be a currency that everybody wants to measure against. But if our words become not our commitment, if they don't become part of who we are, we are all losers. We are all losers. And this is true for people in position of power. It is true for position people in position of responsibilities which this is how they are called in Islam. Leadership is a position of responsibility much more than it is a position of power. You see this in the life of all the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Abu Bakr, radiallahu an, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, all of these leaders, their focus was not on the power they have, but on the responsibility laid on their shoulder. That's why none of them would go home to sleep when they know there could be somebody that is in need or weak or that is poor or didn't have dinner. They will go around the community and check on those vulnerable members of the community to make sure their needs are covered. This is responsibility. So being in a position of leadership is a matter of 
being responsible. Responsible means that you are in Arabic mas'ul. You are answerable. Answerable to whom? You're answerable to the people who chose you. You're answerable to the people who gave you the pledge of commitment, of obedience, and chose you for leadership. You are answerable to Allah who will ask you. Umar ibn Khattab used to say, I am so afraid that if, if a goat or lamb would trip in Iraq, he is in Medina. If a goat or lamb trips in Medina, uh, in Iraq and falls, then Allah would ask me, why didn't you pave the road for it? Imagine how many trucks are swallowed by holes in the ground. How many bridges are not fit for transportation and for crossing heavy trucks? How many people suffer because of the negligence of the leaders who siphon their money for their own wealth, for their own family? And few years, they see that people are boiling, they fly out of the country, take the gold and go away. This is not being a leader. This is being a self-centered, egocentric, selfish person. That's not a leader. We don't provide an example by whatever wrong we do. We provide an example by all the right that we do. We don't do what is right to show people off, but to show Allah who we are. What is our level of commitment? So talking about Umar, this giant that Allah SWT sent in response to the prayer of the Prophet وسلم, who prayed and asked Allah, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahabb al-umarayn ilayk, Amr ibn Hisham aw Amr Umar ibn Khattab. O oh Allah, bless Islam and empower Islam by one of the two Umars to join, either Amr ibn Hisham who did not join Islam, or Umar ibn Khattab, who joined Islam. Umar ibn Khattab was chosen by the Prophet ﷺ for qualities known to Muslims and non-Muslims alike. This is one of the personalities that have received a lot of studies and research. His governor style, his leadership style, his relationships, his decisions, his politics, he has been studied, no one has been studied more than Omar except Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why is that? Because he was a giant. He was a giant before Islam and he was a giant after becoming a Muslim. Before Islam, he fought Islam with all the power Allah has given him. And after Islam, he fought for Islam with all the power Allah has given him. After he joined Islam, he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day and he tells him, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, aren't we following, aren't we on the right path, whether we are alive or dead? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, yes. Then he says, then let us get out. Why are we praying in closed doors? Why are we quarantining the community? Why are we separating from the rest of the community? Let us go out. And he lines the Muslims for the first time in two lines. He is heading one and the Prophet is in the front of the other. And he calls on all the Meccans who were very strong and powerful people like himself. And he says, anyone who wants his mother to miss him forever, let him follow me. This is power. And it is not physical power. He was talking about the power of faith, that for him, living with the truth is no more than dying with the truth. To follow the truth, alive or dead, is the same for him. Most Muslims today, they follow the truth if it is easy. They follow the truth if it pays off. They follow the truth when there is no price to pay. They follow the truth when it is convenient. They follow the truth when everybody else is. But Umar al-Khattab didn't do that. He did the opposite. 
he followed the truth when it was against his own faith. When he believed he was the most ardent enemy of Muslims, they feared him. They feared him because he was reckless in his usage of power and strength against Muslims at that time. He used to torment one of his servants as well. But when Allah turned him to Islam, Umar ibn Khattab was the most beautiful person you could ever want to have for a friend, for a son, for a neighbor, for a father, for a husband, for anything. He was the best of the best. Radiallahu anhu arda. I am reminded of Umar ibn Khattab as we receive a new president of the United States with all of the promises that he makes and all of the comforting words that he is putting forth. What matters most is not only for him to fulfill his promises or keep his word, but for us, the citizens and the community of this country to hold his feet to the fire if he does not. This is what he and his predecessor Abu Bakr radiallahu anhum ajma'in used to tell the community. If I follow the truth, if I obey Allah, you follow me. If I disobey Allah, you correct me. And one man stood up and he said, Oh Umar, if we see you going wrong, deviating from the path, we would fix you with our sword. Umar Khattab doesn't get angry. He says, Alhamdulillah, that Allah has brought in the community people who would fix Umar with their own sword. He was looking for his position as a position of responsibility, not power, service, not to master over people. This is a lesson for all of us Muslims. That, and that's why the companions were running away from positions of responsibility. When he and Abu Bakr were in Saqif at Bani Sa'idah, the community of the uh, Ansar, uh, discussing who will be the successor of the Prophet Wasallam, Abu Bakr tells Umar, give me your hand to give you the pledge of obedience and commitment so that you'll be the leader. And Umar says, no, 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 no. You give me your hand to give you the pledge. They were running away. They were not clamoring to be in position of power. They were looking at it as a load over their back. Umar ibn Khattab, as we all know his stories, one night was walking in the community and he hears children crying inside one of the homes. And he slows down to see what's going on. And he found that the children are crying and crying and crying. So he knocked the door and he says, what is going on? And the lady says, I'm trying to, uh, to wean the child. So he says, breastfeed him. So she started to breastfeed him. But it seems that the child was still crying. So she said, I tried three times and she feeds him. Then finally says, what is wrong? How old is the baby? She said, he's not two years old yet. And he says, and why do you want to, uh, to wean him off? She said, because Umar ibn al-Khattab does not provide financial support for children until they reach two, eight, two years old. He hit his forehead with his hand and he says, what did you do, Umar? What did you do, Umar? What did you do, Umar? How many children have you killed? How many children have you wronged? How many mothers have you made weep? And he immediately changed the law. Immediately, he says to his assistant, change the law and provide for every newborn the same financial support that we offer to the two years old. This is feeling responsible. Another day, similar event happened, and it is said that the lady didn't have food for dinner for her kids, and she was boiling water to make them sleep. And the same thing happened. She said, because Umar doesn't provide. We have nothing. I have nothing to feed them. No flour, no oil, nothing. 
So he goes to Baytul Mal and he brings uh, a whole sack of flour on his own back with his own assistant walking with him. His assistant tells him, let me carry on your behalf, O Khalifatul Rasulullah. And he says, no, you will not carry that load from my back on the day of judgment. It is my load, I have to carry it. Not only that, he goes to the lady's home and he cooks meal for the kids until they ate and they went to sleep. This is leadership. Leadership is to seek the people who need you the most. Because many of them, especially in our community, they do not ask. They don't ask. Not everybody will come and ask. And we should never wait for people to ask. We should ask about people. This is leadership. So I am sharing this with all of you. And if any of you wants to share something with Mr. Biden as he is starting his office, share some of that with him. Tell him this is leadership in Islam. This is what Islam teaches us. This is how Muslims lead the world. That's why Umar al-Khattab, when he grew up to be the caliph of the Prophet وسلم, he was very scared and he would treat all people equally the same. When he went to Jerusalem, he was on his camel and he took turn with his servant. His servant would ride some distance and he would ride the rest of the distance and they switch. And when it came to his turn, it was him. When they came to arrive to Jerusalem, it was his turn to be holding the camel and his servant is riding on the camel. It's amazing. It's amazing humility, amazing sense of deep sense of being true to your faith, true to your community, true to your leadership responsibility. This is Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart to understand Islam and to apply Islam in our life. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحابته ومن اتبع سنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Brothers and sisters Please heed what Allah tells us Fear Allah Be mindful of Allah and stay amongst the truthful ones. Don't increase the number of those who are not. Be truthful and be among the truthful ones. Let your environment support the truthfulness that you believe in, the faith that you believe in, and act on it. Being truthful doesn't mean just speaking truth, but doing truth and giving commitment to truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all Truthful ones. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقم الصلاة